bonding is more complicated than most of us anticipate. Definitely. Usually <laughs> we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the kids' emotions. You know, I know this with my stepdaughter, Annika. I often misunderstood what was holding her back from accepting me. I tended to focus on her negative behaviors, the resistance and the acting out. And frequently I got stuck in frustration and disappointment. Welcome to the Blended Family Coaching Show, where you'll discover how to move your step family from just surviving to truly thriving. Grab your headphones and listen in as we share practical, real-life strategies for building healthy bonds. Understanding the kids' perspective. Romance and partnership. Parenting with great teamwork. And yes, even co-parenting with a difficult ex. We're Mike and Kim Anderson, and we believe with the right tools, every step couple can overcome the common challenges of step family life. Join us for authentic and sometimes comical conversations to discover how you can lead your family with confidence and create the future you really want. Well, hey, welcome and thanks for tuning in. Yes, hello. We are ready for a challenging (laughs) Mm -hmm. but super valuable episode today. But first, we would love for you to take a moment to leave us an honest star rating and maybe even take the time to write a review. Mm -hmm. We're so grateful for your feedback. In fact, we just recently received some feedback from one listener who shared that they felt that we've not been sharing enough about understanding and empathizing with Mm -hmm. kids. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, we don't know your name, (laughs) but thank you so much for your honest feedback. Now, Kim and I believe that it's important to learn about everyone's perspective in blended families, the bio parents, the step parents, and of course, the kids. Absolutely. Now, the great part is that just prior to receiving this review, we were already planning three episodes in a row that are focused just on kids' (laughs) perspective, and that starts with this episode. Now, we're really bummed you felt that our podcast is only worth one star, but we're grateful for your feedback, and we are working to Mm -hmm. keep making our show better for our listeners. All right. Again, if you haven't already, please take a moment to leave your honest rating or review and let's get started with today's episode. Yeah. So we hear questions like this all the time. Why doesn't my stepson like me? Mm. Why won't he respond to me or even talk to me? Or worse, why does my stepdaughter hate me? Oh yeah, the hate word. Oh, we hear lots of frustrations and it's easy to take our stepkids' attitudes and their words personally, mm. right? And it's frustrating because we think we should have a certain degree of control over their attitude towards us. And that creating bonds and step relationships shouldn't be so challenging. <laughs> and because we think that, we often start looking for that silver bullet, right? That's right. We all want an easy fix, yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> that easy fix just to solve the relational tensions between the kids and the step parent. Yep. And we hear couples take this approach, you know, they kind of just say, just tell me what to do. Tell me what not to do so that we don't have to deal with this attitude and this pushback and this disrespect anymore Mm -hmm. in our home. Mm -hmm. It can get really frustrating. But the reality is, sorry, but there is no easy fix. (laughs) Yeah, that's a tough answer, isn't it? We often coach couples around creating realistic expectations and we give them specific strategies to help them grow bonds within step relationships, but they still want that silver bullet. (laughs) Of course. And there just isn't one that guarantees results every time with every child. Mm -hmm. It's just not there. And it can be really hard to accept sometimes, but the truth is that every child is different. They aren't all going to respond the same way to a step parent. You can get a lot of different reactions. Now, you might be thinking right now that you're already being patient and understanding about all these challenges that your kids and stepkids have faced and are currently facing. Yeah. But here's the thing, and just a warning here, this probably isn't the most popular or feel-good response to that, but when we're really honest with ourselves... Most of us are primarily focused on looking for ways to make the problems and the frustrations go away, away, right? Mm -hmm. We want the kids to treat their step parent as, well, a parent, (laughs) right? right. (laughs) With that same respect and with authority. Mm -hmm. 
Now, most of us are really looking for compliance from the kids Mm. in the short term, rather than focusing and understanding with empathy what the kids are experiencing over the long haul. It's much bigger than we think. It is, you know, and bonding is more complicated than most of us anticipate. Definitely. Usually (laughs) we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the kids' emotions. You know, I know this with my stepdaughter, Annika. I often misunderstood what was holding her back from accepting me. I tended to focus on her negative behaviors, the resistance and the acting out. And frequently I got stuck in frustration and disappointment. So for those step parents listening, you might be able to relate to that, right? (laughs) This is an emotional journey and it's a hard one for us and for our kids. It's ongoing. It's not a one and done thing. And kids are grieving losses. They're adjusting to change and they really have no control over what's going on in their own lives most of the time. As parents and step parents, we often say, yeah, yeah, we get it, right? Kids struggle with all this, but then we tend to become impatient sometimes even annoyed when the kids don't move on as quickly as we'd really like them to, right? We want the kids to just get over it according to our timetable without fully understanding sometimes what it is that they need to get over or if it's even a realistic expectation for them at this time. Yeah. You know, there's lots of factors that need to be considered with each individual child. And even when a couple is educated about kids' perspectives, they can still struggle to put all these things into the context of how it works in daily life and how things get impacted, especially when it comes to a child accepting a step parent. You've got to be willing to kind of go on the journey of emotional discomfort with the kids. If you truly want to be a catalyst for change within your blended family dynamics, then you've got to get used to some of this discomfort. The truth is, if you've got hurting kids in your home, it's going to take some time. It's going to take patience. It's going to take understanding. And it's going to take some work for you to actually start to build the bonded relationships that you want to see eventually Mm -hmm. emerge, right? Yeah, and all of this goes beyond knowledge, Mm. right? If you're about ready to tune us out right now because you feel (laughs) like you already know all about the kids and what they've been through and their perspectives, Mm -hmm. we're asking you to stay with us. Stay with us, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because although knowledge is absolutely necessary, what you choose to do with it might fall short when it comes to how you handle the day in and day out situations in your home. Yeah. Uh, Plenty of times I thought I knew what I was doing and I just fell flat. (laughs) Yeah. What we're asking you to consider today might be a little bit hard, but we believe that all the best known bonding strategies and relational maneuverings really aren't going to do much good until you're able to climb into the kid's shoes and you're willing to approach each situation from that place of empathy Mm. and understanding. This is really important. Yep. So rather than looking for that quick fix, today we're hoping that you're willing to just sit in the emotional discomfort of the kids. Mm. And this is going to open up your own perspective even more. Yeah. This will also help to build up your patience and your perseverance for those times when you're feeling really discouraged. Yep, that comes. Right? And you're you're wondering, how long is it going to take for bonds to grow? <laughs> Forever, it <laughs> yeah. feels like that. <laughs> and in those moments when you're really feeling irritated or hurt mm. or fed up with the kids. Yep. So we're asking you to hang in there with us today, even if you already know a lot about kids' That's perspectives. Right. Yeah. Because we're going to take it to a whole nother level today. Yeah. And you know, if you're like me, you probably want an action plan too. But don't worry, we've got you covered on that. Next week, we're going to talk about some specific strategies to help your kids move forward from the things that we're going to talk about today. But This episode is really step one of your action plan. Mm -hmm. You know, Stephen Covey says that one of the most important habits of highly effective people is to seek first to understand before seeking to be understood. And that's what we're about to do. Really seek to understand our kids. All right. Now listen to this quote from step family expert and 32 year veteran stepmom. So she's been a stepmom for 32 years. She also grew up as a stepchild. Did you know that? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, she was a stepchild from age 10. Wow. Mm -hmm. So this uh, expert, her name is Laura Petherbridge, and she co-authored The Smart Stepmom. 
So here's what she says. Like many difficult things in life, change requires hearing insights that will likely be the opposite of what we desire or thought would be the answer. She goes on to say, in other words, like cleaning out an injury, it's likely going to sting a bit. Mm. It's not for the faint hearted or the easily offended. Now, that's a powerful quote that we see play out lots of times. So many of the couples that we coach have the hardest time in the module that we teach about kids' perspective. Yeah, it's hard. Look, we love our kids. We love our stepkids. And we don't want to have to own the fact that they've got some challenges that we can't always fix. So this episode isn't for the faint-hearted, but understanding all of this is critical for your long-term journey. So let's dive in. Yeah, it's not for the easily offended either. Keep yeah. that in mind <laughs> as, we, as we go on. <laughs> All right, so today we're going to explore five of the most common reasons why kids resist step-parents. Mm. Now, we want to be really clear here. Not all kids experience all of these things. These are some of the most common reasons why kids struggle to accept a step-parent. But we aren't suggesting that they apply to every kid in every situation. Right. Yep. Okay. And this is not an exhaustive list. <laughs> there yep. could be other challenges, other things going on as well. But clearly, we can't cover every possibility and every scenario in this podcast That's episode. Right. <laughs> so we're just going to focus on the, the five, five most, most common. common. Yeah. Yep. We also need to ask that you do your best today to maintain an objective viewpoint throughout today's discussion. Really mm -hmm. important. In other words, please keep your mindset on facts rather than on your own perspectives or your own emotions. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't be easily offended, right? <laughs> <laughs> and please don't guilt trip yourself. That's yeah. the last thing we want for you. Remain non judgmental towards yourself, towards your spouse and towards your kids and stepkids and stepkids. Yep. Today is all about objective learning and deeper understanding. We're not casting blame and we're not beating ourselves up. Mm -hmm. Now, remember that when it comes to challenges in blended families, it's not about the people. Mm. It's about the difficult dynamics. So important to remember. Step family structure puts parents and kids on different wavelengths. It just does. We have very different perspectives, and that's really normal. We're so excited to let you know about something brand new we've created just for you. We've realized that with so many episodes available here on the show, it might feel a bit overwhelming to find the topics that matter most to you. That's why we've created a simple tool for you to receive a personalized playlist focused on your current struggle or your biggest challenge. That's right. It's called the Blended Family Breakthrough Quiz. You'll answer just a few questions, and based on your responses, we'll email you a curated custom playlist of episodes that are specific to you. This simple quiz will direct you to the most impactful episodes that pertain to you personally and keep you on track in your journey of discovery, learning, and growth. So, Scroll all the way to the bottom of the show notes for this episode and click the link to take the Blended Family Breakthrough Quiz today. Okay, let's get back to the discussion. That's right. So as we dig deeper into these five reasons why kids resist step parents, first, we need to understand that most kids in a blended family feel powerless in their own lives. Many of the major decisions that impact them are made by other people and they have little to no control. You know, decisions are made without their input a lot of the time, or they might give their input and then the decision that they really wanted didn't happen yeah. the way they wanted they, it to happen. They weren't heard. And that's true really often when a parent remarries. Mm -hmm. We don't want kids to call the shots. Of course not. And they really shouldn't call the shots. But remember that for today, all we're trying to do is just get into their reality to feel what they feel. So as we talk through each of the most common reasons kids resist step parents, rather than trying to figure out how to move your kids beyond these emotional barriers today, we want you to put yourself into their shoes and ask yourself this question. If this were me and I was powerless in this situation, how would I feel? 
Mm -hmm. We want you to name the emotion that you might be experiencing mm -hmm. if you were experiencing what the kids were experiencing. Yeah. That was a lot of experiencing. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you want extra credit, you can even ask yourself, and how would I react to those emotions? Yeah. What would my behavior look like? Yeah. So to help you out with processing all that, we've actually got a free cheat sheet for you uh, to download. And it's just a list of different feelings and reactions that might help you think through some of these possibilities. So mm -hmm. we're going to link to that in the show notes and we'll mention it again a little bit later, mm -hmm. but you might want to push pause and go download that now and maybe use it as you listen through the sure. episode. Now, both bio and step parents can answer these questions together, but you can also do it on your own. Yeah. The most important thing is to really be honest as you think through everything that we're talking about today and remember to stay objective as you put yourself into your kids and your stepkids shoes. All right. So the five most common reasons kids tend to resist step parents. Here they are mm -hmm. in rapid fire. And then we're <laughs> going to dive a little deeper into each one. The first one is that step parents represent the end of a dream. Yep. The second is step kids perceive the step parent as a threat. Mm -hmm. The third one is that kids already have two parents and they really don't see the need for any more. No. <laughs> Fourth is that kids often feel pressured to accept the step parent and the new family structure. Yeah. And then fifth, kids feel like embracing a step parent actually creates guilt and loyalty binds. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to hit all five of those uh, at a little deeper level. All right. So let's take a closer look at that first one. A step parent represents the end of a dream. Yeah. You know, you've probably already heard that most kids hold on to the dream that their bio parents will reunite someday. Oh, yes. <laughs> and if you've ever watched the movie The Parent Trap, this mm -hmm. was these girls' motive, right? To break up dad and his new fiance and recreate their parents' first date when they fell in love. Yeah, and then everybody will go on happily ever <laughs> yeah, after, that, right? Yeah, <laughs> So they were hoping to reignite those original feelings of love so that their parents would get back together and they'd live a happily ever after, right? Mm -hmm. Now, for those of us who are divorced, this seems so far-fetched and crazy. <laughs> I mean, when I watch that yeah. movie, I'm just like, really? But for many kids, this fantasy is a dream that they're holding on to mm -hmm. and still hoping for. That's right. So when a parent begins dating, gets engaged or remarried, these are times when a child who's holding on to that dream of reconciliation, this is a time when they are going to experience heightened emotions. Mm -hmm. So take a minute to consider how each of your kids might be feeling emotionally in this situation, the loss of a dream of their family coming back together. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to focus on that word each. Mm. We have to think of each of our kids individually. It's easy sometimes when we have multiple kids in a blended family to think about them in like a lump, yeah. like how they're all <laughs> yeah. feeling. They aren't lumps. <laughs> but they're each individually feeling oh, different emotions yeah. and some move forward quickly and some don't. Yeah. And so make sure you really, as you evaluate really in all of these, mm -hmm. make sure you're thinking about those kids individually. Yeah. Uh and, you know, as we're talking about this, I'm thinking of one child of a family that we coached who was really struggling with this. Mm. His mom had substance abuse issues and she had abandoned the family. Mm. His parents had divorced and his dad had become romantically involved with someone else. Yeah. Now, from everything we've heard about this young boy, I'd venture to say that he was experiencing deep disappointment at this mm. point, anger and helplessness. Mm -hmm. And his reaction to these emotions was acting out. He would act out physically. He would vent rage whenever this new woman was around the family. Mm. He was obviously opposed to this new woman being around the family, yeah. being part yeah. of the family. So this little boy was still holding out um, hope that mom would get better and re-engage with the family. And he did not want his dad to move on. Mm. because he wasn't ready to move on. That's right. He was holding on to that dream of reuniting his family. Yeah, an interesting side note about this particular situation was that this boy's emotions and reactions really had nothing to do with the woman. Before she became romantically involved with his dad, she was somebody that he actually knew, and 
he kind of liked. He, he was, never yeah, really he had an objection about spending time with her. And she had a child as well. But the negative behaviors actually started after they started dating. Mm. And so, see, it wasn't about her as a person. It was actually about the emotional fallout of losing his dream. Yeah. yeah. Another mm. interesting side note on this scenario was he had a younger sister who absolutely loved this woman yeah, and, and she was, was fine. thrilled yeah, that she was right. dating her dad. Yeah. All right. So think about each of your kids and put yourself in their shoes. If your new step parent represents the end of your dream that you've been holding on to and mm. hoping for, how would you feel? Yeah. And really name the emotions, even say them out loud right now. That's right. Now, remember that we aren't trying to solve any problems today. We're simply sitting in the emotional discomfort of our kids that they might be experiencing. And we're doing this from an objective viewpoint mm -hmm. to gain true understanding, not to blame ourselves or feel guilty. Right, right. So remember, please stay objective and avoid judgments. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to go for the bonus points on this one, ask yourself, if I were experiencing these emotions, how would I react? Mm. You know, you might get really anxious and you might act out of character when that step parent is around. You might become easily irritated. Mm. Maybe you'd be guarded and kind of keeping that step parent at arm's length with mm. this unwillingness to trust them or receive anything from them. Yeah. So think about how each of the kids in your home might be reacting if their dream has been ended by a parent's new romance or remarriage, mm -hmm. and then the possible emotions that they could be dealing with. That's right. If you need to, push pause right now and think through this. Maybe you've mm -hmm. already gone and downloaded the free cheat sheet. It's okay to pause and really think in the middle of this and then keep going yeah. on in the episode when you're ready. Yeah. So let's go to the next one. We'll assume that you've already pushed <laughs> pause and now we're back, right? So here's the next one. Kids often perceive the step-parent and their step-siblings as a threat. Yeah. All right. Now, as the adults, this can sometimes seem absurd. <laughs> as a step-parent, I knew that I loved my stepdaughter Annika, and I had her best interest at heart. It just couldn't be true that I would be a threat. Yeah. But here's the thing. It's not really about me being a threat. It's the feeling that I represented a threat to Annika's relationship with her mom. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that's not true, but we're not talking about what's true or untrue here. We're trying to understand how the kids feel and the reality that they've internalized, yeah. right? So imagine this for a moment, that you're a child of divorce. You're moving between two homes. You have limited time with each of your parents who you love. And you're in a constant state of missing someone you love while you're spending time at the other home, yeah. right? Think about that. When kids are moving back and forth, they're in a constant state of missing someone. Now you look forward to time with each of your parents. And by the way, from your perspective, one of the good things about having divorced parents is that each parent is focused on you entirely when you're with them <laughs> and you get their undivided attention. And that feels yeah, good, right? Sure. Okay. Then everything changes. Now there's a new special person in your parents' life. It might feel like this new relationship is more important to them than their relationship with you. Their focus has suddenly shifted. Now their energy gets focused on connecting with this new person. They're laughing. They're making lots of plans and giggling and giddy and kind of probably sickening is how you <laughs> feel. And when they're around, you just feel like you're fading into the background. Yeah. And then there's more change. There's an engagement announcement. All anyone talks about now is wedding plans and future dreams. And you're sitting there wondering if you're included in that future dream or if you're just along for the ride. Sure, they're reassuring you and they're telling you all kinds of things, but their actions are really connecting with each other. Yeah. And you're feeling set aside. No one seems to care about what you want or what your future is going to look like. Your parents preoccupied and seems to think that this is all going to be great, but you just can't buy it. It feels to you like your parent is slipping away. You don't do the things you used to do together. And now it's kind of awkward whenever that new special person is around, which is most of the time. Yeah. And you know, if the new step parent comes with their own kids, that often adds to the stress and confusion. 
you have to watch your parent connecting with and parenting these new kids. Mm -hmm. Kids you barely know, and now it seems like you're getting even less attention from your parent. That's right. And as if the engagement wasn't bad enough, now there's a wedding, right? It actually, (laughs) the day comes, it shows up. And there's this new person and their kids living with you and your family, invading your space. And more changes come with that. Like what the family eats at dinner time, where you go on weekends. You got to adjust to new house rules and expectations that really never existed before. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've had to move into a new house or a new neighborhood or a new school. How's all that going to affect your relationship? Will that most important person in your life, your parent, have time for you now? Are you still important to them? How will all these changes affect the rest of your life, your friendships, your routines, your preferences? Mm -hmm. Hey, I know it sounds dramatic, but this is what kids experience. So again, let's objectively put ourselves into our kids' shoes and consider how we might feel if we believed that our step-parent was a threat to all these things, to our relationship with mom or with dad. Mm -hmm. That's so challenging. You probably feel helpless. You might feel rejected, forgotten, insecure. You might be angry or hurt or jealous, or maybe a feeling of being insignificant or small. If you were feeling those emotions, right? Here's the the extra credit. How might you react or behave? Maybe you'd be overly critical of a step parent. You might attempt to compete with them, right? Because they're the ones that represent the threat. They're kind of the enemy, quote unquote. I think I'd be desperate to get my parents' attention. Maybe mm. maybe I would start acting out, right? Because negative attention is still attention. Yeah. Right? So <laughs> that's okay. And some kids might try to make things miserable for a potential romantic partner in that dating stage yeah. or when things get escalated to an engagement or a wedding, maybe hoping to scare him or push him away from the family. Take some time to consider these things for each of your kids based on their experiences, their different temperaments, and their position mm-hmm. in the family. You know, it's really common for kids to perceive their step-parent as a threat, not because of who they are, but simply because of their position. So think through how that might be playing out with your kids. All right. So the next common reason why kids might resist a step-parent is they already have two parents and they don't see a need for any more. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Now, as the adults, of course, we have our own perspective that the addition of a step parent is going to be great, right? This is ideal for kids. I'll have more people to love and care for Mm. them. But most kids do not share this perspective. That's right. In fact, it's usually quite the opposite. Mm -hmm. Kids are already working really hard to cope with their parental relationships that are now split between two homes. Mm -hmm. It's a lot for them to manage already going back and forth. Adding more adults into the mix only creates more stress for them. Mm. There's added expectations with more adults telling them what to do and what not to do. Yeah. More adults that they have to answer to, and all too often, there's now more disciplinarians in the home. That's right. right? Not to mention, they also have teachers at school, adults yeah, telling exactly. them what to do, and yeah. coaches on the <laughs> soccer field telling them what to do. Yeah. I mean, kids have a lot of adults already in their lives. That's right. Yeah. And so we've got to be careful with this. Now, we talk a lot about authority, and because of this common reason kids resist step parents right here, they have two parents, they don't see a need for any more. This is one of the reasons that when a step-parent takes too much authority too soon, they're actually sabotaging their relationship with the stepchild. Now, we might think that kids need more structure and discipline. And in some cases, there could be some truth to that. But imagine how they feel when someone who really hasn't earned their trust or has no real parental authority just yet starts to hand out discipline or consequences. I mean, no one likes that. No one likes that. So imagine you walked into work one day and your boss is standing there and says, oh yeah, by the way, this is Mike and he's also going to be your boss. And then Mike just starts ordering you around, telling you what you should or shouldn't do. And Mike hasn't really built a trusting relationship with you yet, but he's acting as though he has the same authority as your boss. How are you going to feel about that? It's kind of the same thing. I wouldn't like it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Now... Take that image and just put your, yourself in your kid's shoes. How would you feel about having another boss yeah. running around telling you what to do, right? 
Yeah, you know, my daughter Annika, she got the double whammy on this one. Mm. When her dad remarried, stepmom took over the discipline role. Yeah. And this created some resentment for Annika, and it made it harder for her to bond with her stepmom. It was tough. And then in the later years, whenever her dad and stepmom were fighting, her stepmom would punish both of them with a cold shoulder. Mm. So Annika was directly associated with her dad whenever stepmom was unhappy with him. Oh, so the adults were fighting and, the, and yeah, Annika, that's she got right. Yeah, I remember in. that. Yeah. Now, this isn't common behavior for a stepmom. But what I'm trying to do here is put myself in my daughter's shoes and understand the emotions she must have been experiencing around having this other parent to contend with, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's pretty overwhelming. Yep. All I remember her sharing at the time is that stepmom was really mad at me and I didn't know why. But daddy said I was in the doghouse with him. <laughs> I remember when she yeah, said that. Yeah. You know, my daughter seemed to be really confused and sad. What's going on here? I haven't done anything wrong. Yeah. Certainly, she felt rejected by her stepmom and helpless to change the situation. She was probably angry, too, but she didn't feel safe to express any of this to her dad. Yeah. It's really hard. She just wasn't asking for another parent. At yeah. That yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the double whammy there. Yeah. So if you were in your kid's shoes, how might you feel about having another parent in your life? And how would you react? Mm -hmm. If your kids are pushing back or if they're copying an attitude whenever the step parent gives direction or asks them to do something, this could be because they don't see the need for another parent in their lives. And maybe they're experiencing some really difficult emotions around this, like resentment or anger or mm. irritation. It yeah. could be really tough. So again, press pause if you need to think about this one for a moment. And if you were in your kid's shoes, feeling powerless, and then having another parent added into your world that has some level of control over you, how would you feel? And based on those emotions, how would you act mm -hmm. or respond? Yeah. What kind of behavior would be going on? So pause if you need to. That's right. All right. The fourth most common thing is that kids can feel pressure to accept the step parent and the new family structure. So I want to share another quote from Laura Petherbridge here. She puts it really well. And she prefaces this by acknowledging this is going to be controversial. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So she says, when a husband and wife insist on saying, we have no steps in this house, everyone's the same. It can push a child farther away. This is one of those things that sounds wise and loving and harmonious, but it can trigger just the opposite. If the child doesn't feel that the step siblings are their brothers and sisters, it can cause tremendous pain and anger. And when we force kids to view the step parent or the step siblings as equal to their biological family, it becomes one more frustration over which they have no control. Mm. Notice the emotion words in there. Tremendous pain and anger due to being forced to accept something they may not just be ready to accept yet. This is all about pressure and kids don't respond well when they feel pressured. Yeah, no one does. No, this is a really difficult position for them to be in and often they feel torn. I know when my dad remarried, I was around seven and it was just expected that I would call my stepmom mom. We had a lot of pressure to act just like a first family in our community of friends, at church, really everywhere we went. And for me, it caused me to shut down more than it caused me to act out. Mm. The pressure actually sabotaged our relationships rather than growing the relationships. Yeah. So what they were hoping for, actually, we ended up in the opposite. Yeah. So consider that. Consider where your kids are right now. How might they be experiencing this pressure? Pressure to act in a certain way, pressure to accept and bond with a step parent. What other emotions besides pain or anger might you be experiencing if you were in, in their, their shoes? shoes? Maybe you'd feel forced to submit. Mm -hmm. Maybe that would cause some anxiety, possibly frustration. This kind of pressure might feel like a burden having to put on a show of acceptance and unity when you're really just not feeling it. This could feel lonely. You might feel somewhat lost wondering where you really belong. And if you're going for the bonus points here, consider how you might respond 
to that kind of pressure. Mm -hmm. If you're feeling those ways, maybe you'd feel the need to just shut down when the whole family is together, or it might just feel really awkward and you're unsure about how you're supposed to act. You might even withdraw and spend more time, more and more time alone or with your friends and their families away from your home. Yeah. Think about how you might feel if you were in that mm-hmm. position. Yeah. All right. Let's look at the fifth common reason why kids resist step parents. And it's this, that embracing a step parent creates guilt and loyalty binds. Mm. Now, this is one that seems to impact a lot of kids, and it may be challenging for us to actually put ourselves in their shoes because this is really hard for us to relate to why it's tough for kids, unless you yourself grew up in step family dynamics. Now, we aren't experts in child development or child psychology, (laughs) but we can all understand the tight bonds and loyalty between a child and their biological parent, Mm -hmm. right? And just as parents are always, you know, for their kids and on their kids' side and wanting to protect their kids from pain, you know, our kids can reciprocate those same things towards a parent. Yeah, they can be protective and on their side. That's Mm -hmm. right. So imagine you're a child and you've got a close relationship with your parents and they're divorced and maybe there's some conflict between them and everyone's kind of struggling to adapt to this new normal with two separate homes and visitation schedules and all of that. And as a kid, you really just want everyone to get along and you want the freedom to love both your parents. Then at some point, let's say your dad begins dating, falls in love and remarries. You might be okay that your dad has found love and is moving on, but you're feeling a bit conflicted about this new person because you don't really know how stepmom fits into your life. And you might also be concerned how your mom is feeling if you let this new stepmom into your life or let them love and care for you. You start to wonder things like, are they going to feel jealous or hurt if I accept my new stepmom or enjoy spending time with her? Or if I like or even love my stepmom, does this mean that I've betrayed my mom? Are they going to think I've replaced them or that I don't care about them if I enjoy spending time with my stepmom? That's right. You know, because kids aren't always aware of their parents' true emotions, right? They're not mind readers. Sometimes they start to make assumptions and project emotions onto their parent, Mm -hmm. how they think they might feel about the situation. And I, I think some kids aren't fully clear on the idea that it is possible and acceptable to love multiple people even more than two parents, right? Right. They can love step parents and parents and it's okay. But they don't quite get that. They don't quite get it. And so they get really confused and they get stuck in what's called a loyalty bind. Now this can be especially tough for a child with a tight bond to a parent. And maybe that parent is really struggling to accept that their ex has moved on and, and recoupled. If the child senses that that parent is hurting, they're most likely going to reject the new step parent in the other home as a means of protecting the hurting parent. And if you want to dig a little bit deeper into loyalty binds, you can go back and listen to episode 29 and we'll link to that in the show notes. But we really need to know that guilt is a strong emotion. Oh, yeah. And if a child who's experiencing even a small amount of guilt for connecting with a step parent then they're probably going to avoid that interaction because they don't want to feel it. <laughs> they, they might even reject the step parent altogether. Right. So try to put yourself into your kid's shoes and feel what they might be feeling if guilt seems to get triggered when they're around the step parent, right? You could be feeling embarrassed or ashamed. I think I'd probably be pretty confused by this Mm. emotional response. Mm -hmm. I might even have a physical reaction like an upset tummy or a headache or other types of anxiety. That's right. Because this is a lot for kids to deal with. That's right. Yeah. So with each of these five Mm -hmm. uh, different reasons that kids might reject a step parent, you got to think about each individual child and work through those emotions and I encourage you to do that extra credit yeah. of really uh, examining what their reactions to those emotions yeah, might what, be. You might start to see some patterns of what mm-hmm. you're experiencing in your home. All right. You have done a great yes. job hanging in there with us and challenging yourself to grow your empathy 
for what your kids and your stepkids might be experiencing within the challenging yes. dynamics of blending a family. Good job. Yeah. And remember, this isn't a silver bullet or any mm. quick fix. But if you can grow your empathy, it's going to change how you show up for your family. Yep. It really is. Brene Brown says that empathy fuels connection. Mm -hmm. We love that. To nourish and grow healthy bonds in a blended family, empathy is a must. Yeah, it's critical. And so to better understand that a little more, um, you might want to go check out Brene's short video on YouTube, and it's all about empathy. It's really good, and we've put a link in the show notes for you because she sums up what we're after here. It's so mm -hmm. important. All right. We talked about a wide range of emotions today as we unpack these five issues that can get in the way and hold kids back from engaging in a relationship with their step parent. Mm -hmm. And we know that this stuff is hard to talk about and yep. even harder to sit with and think about. <laughs> So we just want to commend you and let you know that taking this step toward deeper understanding is going to help you in those difficult moments. That's right. Those moments when you're feeling defeated or feeling impatient, mm -hmm. and it's just going to benefit your family so much in the long run That's if right. you're able to do this work. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we explored some of those possible reactions as well that we might have if we were actually in our kids' shoes, struggling with those emotions. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to all this. And I just want to remind you that we created a simple cheat sheet for you that you can download for free. We've captured lots of emotion words as well as some of those possible reactions to just help you think through what your kids might be experiencing. And you can download that over at our website at mikeandkimcoaching.com forward slash 037. That's our mm -hmm. episode number, 037. Yeah. All right. So remember, I said that this episode only gave you the first step in an action plan to help kids when they're resisting a step parent. Mm -hmm. Next week, we're going to be focusing more on the how-tos with some specific strategies to respond if you think your child is struggling with mm -hmm. one of these five topics yep. that we've covered today. Yep. All right. That makes this episode a wrap. Until next time. 